The name is Dale. I'm doing the review of Prime 2. That's capital P for Primo, Premier, DJ Premier, DJ Premier, Premier, and that's capital R for Royce. Royce the 59. H Y M E. That's how they pronounce it, Prime. They formed the duo, the DJ slash producer, and the rapper. I'm doing this review on behalf of Audio Liquor Magazine. That's Audio Liquor Mag. And my folks, Charles, has already done a review for this album. I usually don't like to do a review for an album he's already done. There's been a few exceptions, like Rhapsody's Latest Wisdom, Kendrick Lamar Damn, and Jay-Z's 444. I only do it if I really like the album. And I just listened to his review, and it seems that we have different opinions on this album. I have this album on a much higher level than he does. I think more of this album. That's not to say he thinks it's whack, and that's not to say that I think this is the greatest thing I ever heard. I just have a higher grade for this album than he does. And how I tend to grade and review albums, which I never explained before, if I'm saying something is an A+, I'm saying it's a classic. So you're probably going to really ever hear me say that. I don't go A++, that's, that's his thing. I go A-, minus A, then A+. Same thing, B-, minus B, B+. I don't even bother reviewing albums I think that are C plus and below. There's really no point. So I'm going to get into a little history of Royce the 59 and a little history of DJ Premier. I first became aware of Royce the 59 on Eminem's first album, which was called the Slim Shady LP. He was the only rapper featured on the album besides Dr. Dre. And they did a song on the album called Bad meets Eve. And I was like, whoa, who is this guy? This guy is nice. He held his own on that joint. And that morphed into them becoming a duo like in 2011. They dropped an album together as Bad Meets Eve as a group in 2011. But the Slim Shady album, Eminem's first album, came out in 1999, I believe. So Royce has been around for a while. And he's heavy, heavily associated with Eminem. You could say Eminem helped him get his start. Him and him are, are good friends, real good friends. And Royce has also done ghostwriting for Dr. Dre. He did some ghostwriting for Dr. Dre on Dr. Dre's second Chronic album. And he also has done ghostwriting for Pete Diddy. I don't know what song or what album, but I know he has done ghostwriting for Pete Diddy. And Royce dropped his first solo album in like 2002 called Rock City. And I was really anticipating that album when it dropped back then because I had heard this song called Boom, which DJ Premier produced, and this song called Soldier Story. And those songs, they were banging. I was like, oh, I can't wait to get this dude out. I've been waiting on him. He had also did some other features prior to that with Eminem that I had heard. I was like, oh, this dude album going to be a monster. I was very disappointed. It was only a few songs I like, and I just named two of them on that album. But he's also, he's done like six studio albums. Like about six studio albums. He's about to drop another album, which I believe drops today. This is the 30th of March while I'm doing this. Now, I might go online. I don't know when it's going to go online. I might go online a week later. But as of today, he dropped another album called The Book of Ryan. I'm not sure why he decided to bring both of these projects out just two weeks apart, two or three weeks apart. But maybe in this age of online streaming for music, it doesn't matter. I just kind of felt he should have waited a few months to drop this book Orion a uh, solo album but anyway and he's dropped like okay to solid albums in the past he really to me didn't have his breakout album into the first prime album that's when I felt he broke through 
he had okay to solid albums before that. And I believe the first Prime album came out in 2014, the end of 2014. So he, he also dropped a solo album called Layers, I think in 2016. That to me was his best solo album by far. That was borderline classic. I killed that album. I was highly impressed with that album. I think him and Kendrick Lamar have put out the best material in the last like five to six years. Like Royce has been killing it. Every project since the first Prime album has been a monster. He dropped the first Prime album, then he dropped Trust the Shooter, which was like a prelude album to Layers. Layers was a was awesome. Then he dropped Bar Exam 4, which is like a mixtape series he's been doing his whole career. He has like four four parts to the Bar Exam, and he dropped Bar Exam 4, I believe, last year, which was great, which was tight for a mixtape. And now he has this new Prime album. So he's been killing it. It's very rare do you see an artist get better the longer his career goes on. He's been better as an artist and as a rapper these last five years than he was at any point in his career before that. And I will say he's put out better albums than Eminem. Like his last five or four projects crush any album that Eminem ever put out. And they crushed all of Eminem's album in totality. I'm not saying he's a better rapper than Eminem. I think Eminem is still technically better than him. From a technical rhyme standpoint, I never I never really heard someone like Eminem flow the way they flow. They can just submerge themselves into a beat and ride a beat like I never heard and change up their flows. So he's not a better rapper in my opinion than Eminem, but he's put out better projects. And I'm an album guy. I'm all about can you put out albums, good albums, consistently. I'm not caught up in, you know, all this social media hype or who got the best freestyle on somebody's podcast or radio station or who's putting out all these mixtapes. I'm about albums. Now, sometimes mixtapes can sound like albums, but I'm about, to me, the mark of a good artist, can you make a good, complete project, an album, and can you consistently bring out an album, a good album out? That's how I base my hierarchy of who's who and who's better than who and what album is better than what. That's how I do it. So we're going to move on to DJ Premier. DJ DJ Premier is my favorite producer, bar none. If it was a Mount Rushmore producers, he would be on it. I re, I got respect for the Dr. Dre's, the Pete Rocks, the Just Blaze, the Alchemist, Pharrell, Neptunes. I got respect for all those guys, but. DJ Premier is my favorite. He's the one that made that made me want to start making beats myself. I tried the rapping thing. I wasn't good at it. I could write, but I really couldn't convey. I wasn't good at it. Never was comfortable behind the mic and performing in front of people. That was never my thing. He's the one that made me want to start making beats. I first became aware of DJ, uh, DJ Premier with this group called Gangstar. Him and Guru formed this duo, this group, the legendary group Gangstar. Rest in peace to Guru, he passed. And I, I remember buying their first album, their first cassette, No One Missed a Nice Guy, that was their first album. I bought it, I just took a chance. I think I actually bought it before I even saw or heard the song Manifest. Manifest was on that album. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I actually bought the cassette before I even saw the video for Manifest. I just took a chance. Back in those days, I would take a chance 
if it looked like hip hop, even if I never heard nothing from it, I would just buy. I was that much of a hip hop nerd back then. I would just buy if it looked like hip hop, and I still ain't had no awareness of who it was or didn't know anything about it. I would still buy. So that's how I came upon Gangstar. And the first album was solid, wasn't great. His production then didn't blow me away. I don't even think he did all the production on that thing. Mark the 45 King did some of the production on that album. But Gangstar's second album, Step Into the Arena, Step Into the Arena, the production on that joint blew my mind. It, it, I was like, oh man, this guy is on another level. He just, with the cutting and scratching in the production, I love that album. That's today probably still my favorite Gangstar album. And I like all the albums. They never made a bad album to me. I think they have like, I'm trying to figure out how many uh, albums do they have. They may have like six studio albums. I'm just going on top of my head. I have all of them. But yeah, then when, and, and DJ Premier has done production for other people. He's done production for Nas, Jay-Z. You know, you always hear people saying Nas needs to go back to getting production for DJ Premier and Jay-Z needs to go back to getting production from uh, DJ Premier. He's done production for Karis One, Biggie, Christina Aguilera, Rakim. The list goes on and on. He's done production for Royce prior to them coming together as a group. He's produced songs like Boom, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, he produced a song called Hip Hop on Royce's second album, which was actually one of his better albums from back in the day. I think it was Death is Certain album. I could be wrong about that title, but anyway. He's done a production for Royce on this song called Second Place, which is on his uh, one of his uh, albums called Success Is Certain. Could have the titles of the albums confused, but anyway. So he's a legendary producer. And when they first did the first Prime album, I love the idea. Royce had this idea where he would take a producer, a, a regular, well, I ain't gonna say regular, a producer who who did his who did original music. He composes original music, and DJ Premier would take their original compositions and sample it as if he was digging in the crates for old records. That's what DJ Premier is known for: digging in the crates, finding obscure sounds and samples, chopping them up in the SP or whatever uh, machine or device he's using and making uh, a monster song with it, a monster beat with it. So for the first Prime album, they took Adrian Young's original music, DJ Premier chop it up as if he was digging in the crates and, and, and got it from other old records. Now, I heard a voice on interview saying he had to basically twist DJ Premier's arm to do this because he didn't want to do it at first because he was so used to digging in the crates, finding samples from old records and sampling that way. But I believe Royce wanted to do this to not have to deal with all the politics of clearing samples and the headache that goes through and how much it costs. So I thought this was a brilliant idea. And I love the first Prime album. But this Prime album is better. And for this Prime album, they chose to use this guy named Ant-Man Wonders music, who does his original own music himself. Going back to Adrian Young, if you're not familiar with him, he plays a lot of different instruments. He knows how to play a lot of different instruments. He's done whole albums for Souls of Mischief, He's done a whole album for Ghostface Killer. I believe he did the score for the Black Dynamite movie. I believe him and Ali Shahi Muhammad 
did the score together for the first season of Luke Cage. Now this guy Ant-Man Wonder that they use for the Prime 2 album, I'm not that familiar with him. I know of him, but I'm not familiar of his past work. I believe he did production for Sky Zoo in the past, Action Bronson. I don't think he's done a lot of work for different artists. But from what I can hear from this album, it seems like dude got some serious talent with his original music maker. So, this album is better than the first Prime album. Excuse me. So, I'm going to go into some of the songs. I'm going to go into most of the songs. It was only two songs I didn't care for. They're not bad by any means, but I just didn't care for them. It had elements I liked about them, but it was a few things that stood out that I didn't like that kind of made me skip those two songs. Anyway, we're going to go into Salute. That's basically the intro. Primo's talking about the meaning of the group name and the concept behind the sound. Should have done this intro on the first Prime album. Because they really didn't explain the concept or the name on the first Prime album. So you had people calling them P-Rhyme. <laughs> so this is something that could have been and should have been done on the first album. But I guess they would kind of make up for it. Then you got this track called Black History. Which was actually on Royce's Trust the Shooter project. So I already heard this before. This, this version of it on, on this Prime 2 album is a little longer. You know, Royce is singing on it towards the end. And there's some scratching and cutting at the end that wasn't really on the Trust the Shooter version. Uh, Royce is talking about his life. He talks about DJ Premier history, his history. He talks about the history of hip hop. You know, giving love to certain artists from the past. And a few from, you know, from the now generation. You got one of the hardest. That's another track that I like. Hardcore rhymes over ugly face music. Primo is cutting and scratching. LL Cool J at the end. I like it. You got another joint called Era featuring Dave East. Ugly face music again. That's the common theme with this album. If you don't know what that term means, ugly face music. You hear something that's so banging and so incredible, you just nod and you got that, just making that squinchy face like, damn, this shit is nasty. That's ugly face music. You could take that term and use it. That's the beat. The beat seems a little simple on era. But it's banging. It's simplistic but banging. And they got a video for this joint too. So check that video out on YouTube if you ever get a chance. If you haven't seen it already. Then you got another track called Wow. That's capital W, capital O, capital W. That means without warning, featuring Yellow Wolf. Now, I know of Yellow Wolf, but I'm not too familiar with his music. It's kind of an odd pairing. And I was like, Yellow Wolf? Why is Yellow Wolf featured on a Royce joint? But it works. He Yellow Wolf did a good job, but Royce kills it. Royce killed it. And you got another track called Sunflower. Featuring Novel. He's singing at the end. I dig the hook. The beat. It's... It's tight. It's good. I, I like the beat to it. I really like the beat to it. Then you got like another track called Streets at Night. Ugly face music again. Digging the punchlines. You got Rocket. It feels like a throwback to the early to mid 90s hip hop. I dig that. They got a video for that. Loved Ones featuring Rhapsody. It's about a wife who finds out about the mistress. 
and Ro and uh, Rhapsody plays the wifey in this in this story. So that was that was I like that. That's a tight concept. Then you got my calling, hard hitting joint. Dig it. Then you got Made Man featuring Big Crick. You got Porter singing on the hook. The production is crazy. And you got Everyday Struggle, which I think the title is a play on that Complex Media video that Joe Buttons used to be on. Complex Media show that Joe Buttons used to be on with DJ Academics. Uh, I think that's a play on that joint. He's talking about how the old rappers are beefing with the new rappers and the new rappers are kind of disrespecting the old rappers and he's talking about how we need to kill all that and do away with all that you know he speaks about Lord Jamal on that I forgot the name of that guy's uh, video joint that he's always on you know he says a line about Lord Jamal kind of like discriminating against his man Eminem for being white <laughs> at least that's how I interpret it uh, you gotta do your thing a jazz feel to it, nice horns, Royce is singing on the hook and he actually doesn't sound bad singing, he kind of has a decent voice for singing. Then you got Gotta Love It featuring CeeLo Green, he's basically just rapping, Royce is just basically rapping over music, no drums, uh, it's like a love letter, so to speak, to Detroit and he's showing love to other DJ rappers. I mean other Detroit rappers and producers. I thought they brought in the drums like real late, super late. I think this song could have been stronger if they had brought the drums in much earlier. But I still like it. I still respect the joint. It's a good way to end the project. Uh, the two songs I didn't like, I didn't care for too much was this joint called Respect My Gun featuring Rock Marciano. I didn't like the hook. I liked everything else but the hook. It wasn't really much of a hook, but I thought the hook was kind of corny. It was kind of lame to me. That's just me. And this other joint called Flirt, which is featuring 2 Chains. I thought it felt kind of out of place. It's an attempt at radio play. It's not a reach. It's not a bad song. I like a lot of components of the song it just feels a little out of place and it doesn't do anything for me I listened to it several times and I just can't fully get invested in that song but nevertheless I give this album an A I love the production on this album and Royce is a monster on the mic so I had no questions about that didn't have no questions about the production cause I'm a fan of the first Prime album this is the type of production I gravitate to. We in this era where we got this melodic, light in the ass, emo type production. You either got trap music or you got this very melodic, too cool for school type of production where you got, you know, some keyboard chords and piano chords. You know, the type of shit you hear on a Drake album or J. Cole album, or even sometimes on a Kendrick Lamar joint, you even got, you seem like you've got trap music or that. That's kind of like the dominating sound of the last, what, five, maybe 10 years. And I like this. This is like new era boom back for me. I need some nasty drums. I need some soulful shit. You know, I, that that type of sound, that melodic sound is cool. But I want to hear more production like this. Not an imitation of it, but just in that vein. And there you have it. I went along. I did a deep dive in this joint. I figured this joint was going to take some time. I was going to wait to the Book of Ryan joint drop to do this uh, review. Just do both of them at the same time. That shit would have been too long. So here you go.